Okay, welcome to another edition of Writing Tips. So what we're going to focus on this week is evidence. So if you remember back to body paragraphs, I'll scroll up just a little bit. We've got things like topic sentences, but we know that each body paragraph is comprised of three things. Topic sentence, evidence, and analysis. We know that our topic sentence is going to kick off the body paragraph by laying out an argument that we will unpack in the body paragraph. Now what we want to do that we've laid out a particular argument is we want to back it up with evidence. And I'll show you how we do those things. So what is evidence? The evidence will demonstrate the argument in your topic sentence in one or more of the following ways. It's either going to demonstrate the argument with a quote from an outside source or from the text itself. If you're working from a text with actual words or a script or a transcript that you can pull off the internet somewhere, try to use those words. Quote the evidence, quote the text itself. So you can quote something. Another way you can go about Proving your argument with evidence is with a succinct description or a summary from the text. So maybe you're building an argument from a film you watched or a short story and you want to summarize a scene in a really succinct way. That's fine. You can do that as well for a line of evidence. Or you can prove your point with a relative anecdote. That's a personal story that you have. That's something that's happened to you. An idea or philosophy that validates the claim of your topic sentence. And so the reason why I'm using Atticus Finch here is because Atticus Finch is a lawyer, right? And what lawyers do is they make an argument and then they prove it with evidence. So your topic sentence, like we've said before, does not need to be a statement of fact, something like birds can fly, right? That's, that's a fact. That's not an argument that you're going to have to prove. You need to make an argument, something like Chick-fil-A French fries are the greatest of all French fries. Whoa, those are fighting words. Now, back it up with evidence, with data right with personal anecdotes philosophies things like that so once again just to reiterate your topic sentence must be an argument something that a logical person could disagree with that way you've got your work cut out for you for the rest of the body paragraph it's much easier if you have an argument there because now you're simply trying to prove what you just said okay so let's start with just embedding a quote here's a topic sentence i'm, I'm using right I just thought it'd be funny to have a vegetarian thing. By adopting a vegetarian diet, consumers can rest easy knowing that they are not participating in the rampant cruelty of the meat industry. Right? I'm just throwing something. I've read, I'm, I, I formed this after I read a book about eating meat. Right? I'm not trying to make anybody feel guilty. I just thought my God, I thought it'd be humorous. Please, Lisa, I thought you loved me. Thank you. You might not be laughing. Okay. So that's our topic sentence. So now what we need to do is we need to prove this argument in one to three sentences, right? That's just a general rule. It's not like a thing that you have to have. That's just what I'm going to try to do, okay? Here's a bad example. If I said, everyone knows the meat industry treats animals horribly by doing shocking things to them. This is so general, right? This is not going to work. It's not going to cut it. First of all, everyone is an absolute. As soon as you say everyone, as soon as you say everyone, your reader is going to go, hmm, really? Everyone? I'm pretty sure there are farmers who ethically treat their animals well, right? And even beyond that, surely not everyone knows this. I'm sure there are people that might be ignorant of the fact that some places treat animals in ways that are inhumane, right? So it makes the reader really suspicious when you use an absolute like everyone no one, everybody, nobody, all, none. Instead of doing those, opt for something a little bit more nuanced, like most people, things like that, okay? And when you say treats animals horribly, this is really vague and subjective. It's way too general to stimulate any interest. So you've got to be specific. What type of horrible treatment are you talking about? Then I, as the reader, can determine whether or not it's horrible treatment. So here is a good example. In recent years, the Federal Department of Agriculture has revealed the horrible living conditions we submit animals to in order to feed the population. From tiny cages, living in complete darkness, tearing the young away from their mothers, we can see this institution engaging in appalling behavior. And then I give the in-text citation of where I pulled that quote from, from an author named Baldwin. And if you're interested in where that source was, you can look at my works cited page to determine 
if the article is credible, yada, yada, yada. Okay, this answer is specific. And not only is it specific in that it gives an actual authority, the Federal Department of Agriculture, but I give you actual conditions that let you as the reader determine, are these horrible conditions, right? Are these inhumane? And I'm proving my topic sentence that people that don't eat meat aren't participating in the cruelty of the meat industry. My dad's a farmer, by the way, that slaughters cows. I just want to throw that out there. Full disclosure. Okay. Um, farmer slash rancher. He's a cool guy. I got lots of dad stories. Hopefully you'll love to hear dad stories in your class with me. Okay. So that is a good example. So all in all, this is what your body paragraph, paragraph would look like for the first two phases, for the topic sentence and the evidence. I don't have an analysis here yet. So there's one more phase of the body paragraph that we would get into. So here's my topic sentence. By adopting a vegetarian diet, consumers can rest easy knowing that they are not participating in the rampant cruelty of the meat industry. There's my argument. Now let's prove it. In recent years, the Federal Department of Agriculture has revealed the horrible living conditions we submit animals to in order to feed the population. In tiny cages, living in complete darkness, tearing the young away from their mothers, we can see this institution engaging in appalling behavior. Right? And so that is how I'm building the evidence. I'm going to lay out an argument in my topic sentence, and I'm going to back it up with evidence. Right? That's what I'm looking for. And for one of our next lessons, we'll talk about an analysis. Um, but think about those portions of evidence, right? You can use text, you can use an anecdote or anecdote, a personal story, or you can use an idea or philosophy that you have. All of those are credible. You just have to match it to whatever your prompt or assignment is asking you to do. Okay? All right. Stay tuned for more videos specifically about analysis as we're learning to put together these effective uh, body paragraphs. Goodbye.